Hey you all, and good morning. We spent the night here in Williams, Arizona, which is known as the gateway to the Grand Canyon. So I could skip the Grand Canyon and just keep plowing on with Route 66, but I have some unfinished business with the Grand Canyon. I've been to the Grand Canyon two other times. Both times, the canyon was full of fog. It's what they call it, zero visibility. I only got the slightest of peaks at the Grand Canyon. So, the skies are clear right now here in Williams. Of course, Grand Canyon is still an hour drive and an hour back from Williams. So, who knows? The weather out here in the desert appears to be very unpredictable. So, it's possible I could get out there and I could strike out a third time. But I think we're gonna we're, we're gonna take a crack at it, and uh, hopefully, we can see what all this fuss is about when it comes to the Grand Canyon. So please, follow me. They're actually building some form of mountain coaster here in Williams. All right, we are parked in Raven and look at that there's an actual Raven sitting there on Raven uh, sitting on a real Raven sitting on a fake Raven's head in the Raven parking lot he's talking so we've parked here in the Grand Canyon parking lot and look who's here I was not expecting this <laughs> Oscar Mayer Wienermobile parked here at the Grand Canyon, that is, I've seen them driving before. I actually don't know that I've ever been this close to a part one. They come all the way from Wisconsin there. Wow. And now we have the moment of truth. I'm walking up to the rail as we speak. The uh, sky is clear, the visibility seems good. Let's go take a peek at that Grand Canyon, the grandest of all the canyons. A lot of people out here today looking out over the edge. You can see the fence right there, and oh my goodness, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty grand. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Pretty, pretty amazing. That is probably the most amount of vastness I have ever seen. You can see the people out there on the lookout and just look at how vast that is beyond them. All right, so we'll walk out here onto the edge of this lookout. There is a helicopter. Helicopter down there carrying something. I don't know if they've rescued someone or what's going on. Just see this panoramic view from up here at the lookout point. Look at that. You can see the people over there on the lookout there just gives a little bit, a little bit of reference on how big the canyon is, but still then it's just unbelievable how big this is. 
Yeah, can I stop right here? I'll come eat that one. Oh, not you then, Colin. What? What do you want? You take the picture. See, so there's some people out there on that rim. There's no railing over on that lookout. Just pull out here. Just see how insane that is. Yeah, look at those insane maniacs down there. I guess this is what people will <laughs> are willing to go through for to get a good uh, good photo. I must say, this may be the grandest canyon I've ever seen. So a little bit of a ledge here that I could probably feel safe walking on. Ooh. Okay, so feet are planted right here, and just, oh my gosh. Wish you guys were here with me, and you could see this in person, because it's pretty great. Looks like something going on ahead there in the bushes. Everyone's pointing their camera into the bushes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of elk hanging out here in the bushes. Oh my God. Do a oh, look at that. Baby. Come little on. baby, little baby elk there. Yep. That has to be the mama. What? Oh no. That has to be mama. She's bigger. I think you're Can I see it for a nibble on the ground. So yes. The third time's a charm. Made three trips out here to the Grand Canyon, and finally on the third trip, we get to actually see what the canyon looks like. And man, it is beautiful. I am sure any video clips I've taken today of the canyon just pale in comparison to what it's like to actually see it with your own eyes. I would definitely encourage anyone out there who's been putting it off to, to take the leap and go see the Grand Canyon. It's, it's something that I really can't compare to anything else that I've seen. Um, you know, some people mockingly say it's a hole in the ground. No, it's not a hole in the ground. It is, it is an absolute wonder. It uh, will take your breath away. It's like staring into space, something so large and amazing and natural that it, it, will, it will move you. I feel it will move you. Uh, I do want to mention my National Park Pass. I paid $80 for this at the uh, Petrified Forest National Park. Um, and I paid that would have cost 25 normally so I paid 80 for this and it was 35 to get into the Grand Canyon Park today So I've used about $60 worth of the $80 of the annual pass So I'll probably need to go to at least one more uh, National Park probably this summer I'm gonna figure out some National Park to go to to uh, to, to have this pay for itself um, and Again always looking for suggestions on uh, national parks. I know a lot of the national parks out east like Smoky Mountain National Park are free they don't require admission, but uh, yeah, definitely want to look for places where I can use my annual pass. Literally, I probably could spend all day here. There's so much more to see. This is just one outlook, overlook on the Grand Canyon, and there's dozens of them. Um, so yeah, I could maybe come back here someday and do a more in-depth Grand Canyon video, but for the sake of sticking to our schedule, we've got to get back on Route 66. The Stagecoach Motel here. On the bottom we have Betty Boop with a pizza. And uh, I guess they're Norwegian owned. Here we have the Snowcap legendary restaurant here on Route 66 in Seligman, Arizona. The important thing is that they serve their cheeseburgers with cheese. All sorts of good stuff here. Malts, tacos, burritos dead chicken <laughs> sorry we're open we'll just uh, let ourselves in here and you see that's a oh no they're locked or that's just a fake doorknob and this is the real one. Oh wow it's completely covered with 
business cards, Polaroids, and dollars in here. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a, a straw to go straw. with it. Or that straw. I think, I think this choose. one this one seems more um, okay. functional. That might. that might work. Waiting for the cheeseburger out here on the back porch. Got a montage of photos from the family, the Deladio family here that runs the snow cap. Jacob. There we have it, my cheeseburger with cheese. All right, give us a taste. Mm. The bun is nice and toasted. Mm. Good stuff right there. What are you doing, Route 66 cat? Oh, you're a good kitty. In the back here, we have a whole family of cars with eyes. <laughs> it's the uh, sheriff from the movie. It's a pickup truck. Oh, these, this gas tank has eyes. That's interesting. Oh, it's cars with a K. K A R Z. That makes a lot of sense. You have a telephone booth. They actually have a toilet installed so you can poop while talking on the phone. Does anyone watching this video, does anyone poop while they're talking on the phone? Leave a comment in the comment section. Seems to be an ongoing toilet theme here. We got a couple of air conditioned outhouses. I, are we allowed to? Oh, this is an actual bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Here at the snow cap, we enter Juan's garden. Oh, look at that. There appears to be some sort of body sticking out of the doghouse here. And who is that? Yeah, the toilet theme is strong here. Lots of toilets. There's a person possibly suffering from alopecia sticking out of that toilet. And over here next to the snow cap, we have some chunks of vehicles here. Oh, it looks like we got some sort of robot-like creature. Well, this is Angel Degadillo here. He was, uh, he's actually the brother of the man that ran the snow cap. And um, he's very well known for being one of the um, people that was the main proponent of preserving Route 66 and kind of started the Route 66 preservation movement. And Angel was a barber by trade. Here is his actual barber shop there, his barber chair. And then there's a, a cardboard cutout, so you can see what it would be like if he was here cutting someone's hair. Get your kicks. We have kind of a history of Angel and who he is and what he's accomplished. In 1987, he started the uh, Route 66 Association of, Association of Arizona effort to bring Route 66 back after it was bypassed by Interstate 40 in 1978. And then in 2001, he was interviewed by John Lasseter of Pixar. The majority of the script of Cars was based on stories that Angel had told. Of course, you know, Cars is kind of really cool in a way that it, it, uh, it kind of personifies Route 66 and they really put a lot of love into making it represent Route 66. And then 2015, Angel's inducted to the National Barber Hall of Fame. And uh, 2020 marks the 70th year of Angel Degadillo's nonstop barbering career. And it is map check time. So we started in Chicago, headed down. We didn't eat at the Cozy Dog, but I did eat there a couple, a couple months ago as we cut through Missouri. We built by Kansas. We did see the original Tomater in Kansas. Stop by and saw the Blue Whale here in Oklahoma. Of course, we also hit Cadillac Ranch and ate dinner at the Big Texan. And then moved on to New Mexico where, here it is. We saw the Jackrabbit and moved on 
to Seligma, Ari Seligma Arizona, and we ate at the snow cap. And then, all we gotta do now is go to the Sa Santa Monica Pier. Here lies Billy Pretzel, last guy who touched my Edsel. Yes, please, don't touch another man's Edsel. Now here is the Rusty Bolt gift shop. You can see a very interesting <laughs> design here where they have the different mannequins all over the place. Mannequins up on the roof over there. I just see in the window there all these mannequins hanging out. Over here we have some discarded children and that one's wearing a bunny suit. You can see this woman right here. And then there's some sort of Native American poking out of the window over there. And I don't know who that guy is right there. See this VW bus, there's a tradition of People putting their stickers all over it. You can see that actually someone's, some people have left love locks here on the grill. Now when I was here, when I did my last Route 66 trip years ago, I put a sticker on here and I was checking for it and there is actually, believe it or not, a remnant of the sticker. If you can see that, right there was a carpetbagger sticker at one point. It's, Almost been completely removed, but a little corner of it still remains. There's a lot of these cars out in front. This Model T says, please respect my age, I'm old, so don't go putting your hands all over it. See Marilyn hanging out inside the gift shop. Some fancy cars here inside the gift shop. A very happy mannequin head. Oh, I couldn't miss this. A little jackalope hanging on the wall back here. This little diner area here with some motorcycles. And a big bulldog here in the diner seat. Oh, and there's a Route 66 alien in a tutu. Let's see this building. That's a uh, plane crashed into it. Actually, that little sign there says airplane rides, $5. world-famous Roadkill Cafe. This is actually where I usually eat when I'm in town, but I did want to try uh, the snow cap this go around. Uh, yeah, they don't serve, technically they don't serve Roadkill, but they have a Roadkill themed menu. You can see they have some elk heads in here. We saw the uh, elk over there at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, Roadkill Cafe. Their menu is so clever that they actually sell copies of it here in the gift shop. There's things like the awesome possum, the splatter platter. I guess not a big surprise that the Roadkill Cafe would have loads of taxidermy. And look at this tableau here. We got the elk, we got the little fox there with a the bird, it's a bear. I'm not sure what that is. Is that a is that a coat of Monday? Maybe? And a badger and a rattlesnake down there. And a big old wolf, mountain lion. Good stuff. Oh, another jackalope right there. And then this scary little guy. Reminds me, last time when I did my last Route 66 trip, I left my debit card here at the Roadkill Cafe. I left it in when they give you the little booklets to pay. I put it in there. I signed it and I did not take it out. I left it behind. But I, I wanted to, I wanted to bring this up because the folks here at the Rogue Hill Cafe actually mailed it back to me. They were, you know, they told me, they, they told me like, you know, if it doesn't get there, we just you don't you don't want us to get mad at us, but we will drop it in an envelope and send it to you. So I thought that was nice. They were very helpful. So kudos to the Rogue Hill Cafe. Out here in the parking lot, they have a 1860. Arizona Territorial Jail that you can peek in. Oh my gosh. 
sorry. I'm sorry I haven't made it to Santa Monica yet. My only crime is dawdling. Here's a mobile uh, territorial jail right there. I don't know if these kind of doors make a lot of sense on an outhouse, these swinging bar doors, because you can still look down and see people pooping. And here we have a classic stop out in the middle of nowhere here on Route 66, the Hackberry General Store. Oh, look at this. They got a kitty. Hey, kitty. How are you? You a nice kitty? You see a Native American lady here next to the payphone. Let's check and see if this is a working payphone. It is not. It's this old garage here. It's this classic truck inside. Ooh, I like this Mercury station wagon here. I think that'd be a pretty cool car to uh, drive around in. It's got a big cactus right there. Got some graffito tags on that bus over there. Careful going out at night because there's a big bunch of cactuses right by the outhouse. Stopped off here at Antares Point Ranchero, home of Giganticus Hedicus, as it said right there. And yes, indeed, here is Giganticus Hedicus. It's like a giant green tiki head. It's pretty amazing. You see up in the ceiling, they have a, like a hatch there. Then there's all these little toy robots. Oh, look at that little guy, he's pretty cute. And look at this little replica of twin arrows. We were just there the other day. Was that yesterday? I can't remember, maybe it was yesterday. But we saw this cafe, but it was all torn apart and covered in graffiti. And then one of the arrows had fallen down. They've got their own version of Mater here. Actually says Radiator Springs Towing. And then uh, Herbie the Love Bug right there. Oh no, oh, oh no. Another, another bucket of, of rattlesnakes. I mean, I think this one's probably real. All the others have been gags where when I looked inside there was rattlers for babies instead of actual baby snakes. But I'm theorizing that this one is actually going to contain poisonous snakes. Oh, it's just still baby rattlers. One of these days, I'm gonna look in one of these and a bunch of snakes are gonna jump up and bite my face off. What is the deal with this car right here? It's like squishy. It's almost like it's made out of, like it's made out of nerve or something. I guess it's helpful when you get in uh, car accidents. Giganticus Hedicus. Now we're going to do a bonus soda of the day. While I was in there, I noticed they sell the Route 66 soda. And I've actually noticed a lot of places along Route 66 do sell the Route 66 soda. So I figured I've been doing soda every day, so I might as well add Route 66 soda to the mix. So we have Route 66 root beer here. Root beer seems like an, and this is a twist off. <laughs> it does say twist off right there. Uh, we have root beer. It seems that root beer is a popular drink along Route 66, so. Twisted right off. Mmm. And that is a very yummy root beer. I may go back and try some of the other Route 66 sodas. If anyone knows any one, any any flavors that are particularly good of the Route 66 brand of soda, let me know. 
Okay, my theory that gas has been getting higher as we go west, I think it's just come true. Ouch. 539 a gallon for regular. That's that's pretty high. We're here in uh, Kingman, Arizona. Ouch. Tonight for our accommodations, we will be staying here at the El Travator Motel. It's a hotel built in the 1930s. You can see here on the sign, it says legendary Hollywood icon theme rooms. You can see the El Travator Tower there, advertising it to uh, people driving on Route 66. See Mr. Magoo driving in a little truck here, advertising the El Travator. See here at the office, they advertise the world's longest Route 66 map. And actually on this first building here, they do have a map of Route 66 painted on the walls here. See Sylvester the cat there. So okay, over here, I guess we're starting over in California. We have Santa Monica. San Bernardino, Barstow. It's the world's largest thermometer. We're, we'll hopefully be seeing that soon. Oatman, that's where we're heading tomorrow morning. Famous for its donkeys. And then we are right here in Kingman. We visited Seligman earlier today. We went to the Grand Canyon through Flagstaff. Spent the night in Holbrook at the Wigwam Village. And we saw quite a few fiberglass dinosaurs. Here we went through Gallup. We stopped at the Continental Divide. There's the Albuquerque. Albuquerque is known for its hot air balloons. On to Tucumcari, where they're known to have a thousand motel rooms. I stayed at the Blue Swallow. There's Amarillo, Texas. We stopped and had a moderately sized steak. Shamrocks, where I kissed the Blarney Stone. I don't remember, don't remember a uh, tornado in Elk City. Oh, and there's the first ever meme. Kilroy was here. So Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Galena, Kansas. We took a short tour through Kansas. Joplin, Carthage, Springfield, and the uh, St. Louis Arch. Oh wait, where's Chicago? Oh, here we are. Chicago is over there. And look at that, yes. It says the world's largest Route 66 map, 206 foot map, and a chimpanzee in a cowboy hat is giving us the thumbs up. A mock gas station there with the El Trobatere Tower. Now each room is themed after a celebrity in this section. They have the Clint Eastwood room, the Marlon Brando room, but we are gonna be staying in the James Dean room. Let's take a look here. Oh yes, there's the bed there. We got pictures of James Dean surrounding us. And they're playing uh, To Kill a Mockingbird on the, on the TV. I don't think James Dean was in that movie. And then uh, let's check out this bathroom. There's the toilet there. Oh my gosh, look at the shower. That's a very interesting shower. Let me pull back. Oh yeah, very unique. It's a very, that's a classic right there. Classic Route 66 shower. And there's a bathtub here. It looks like it's been sealed shut. I guess that's no longer in operation. Oh, I like how this chair here looks like a director's chair. Oh, look at that. It's a trash can from Mandalay Bay. Thank you for joining me here on another day on Route 66 as I begin to settle down here at the El Travator 
Hotel. Had a wonderful day today. Saw the Grand Canyon for the first time with my eyeballs. It was completely foggy the first few times I went, and this time it was nice and clear. Also got to visit some other towns along Route 66, some other wonderful stops. Uh, but the end, the end is getting nearer. We are uh, going to be hitting the end of the route within the next few days. I believe, as I'm, as I'm speaking right now, it is Thursday night. I think tomorrow, just Friday, I'll be heading maybe halfway into California. And then Saturday, I should be driving the rest of the way and arriving at the pier, the Santa Monica Pier, the end of Route 60. Six. So I hope you guys will continue to join me in the next few days as we finish up Route 66. And I hope you guys will continue to join me as I continue to make content and upload content to this channel. Uh, if you'd like to help me support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. There's going to be a new enamel pin available once I make it back to the bunker. And uh, all that helps keep train on the track, boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.